Every software should be able to build the patient to send them a request for a review, to send them a request for a reminder of their appointment. These are the basics of the software. What we try to do is to make that clinical experience very special. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Raving Patients Podcast. As you know, I'm your host, Dr. Len Tao, and I want to uh, start off by uh, thanking our sponsors, Dental Intelligence, Cloud Dentistry, and the Doc Sites. Without their support, uh, this would not be as possible as it is. Um, so thank you to those guys, and, and please uh, listen to the commercials and uh, find a way to check them out because they're all really good companies. So today's episode is called Patients Are Craving a Personalized Experience, and we're speaking to Rania Saleh from Oryx Dental Software. Rania, thank you so much for joining me today. Well, thank you for having me. So um, why don't you introduce yourself, tell people a little bit about your background. I'm Rania Saleh. I'm the founder and president of Oryx Dental Software. Uh, I was a practicing dentist for many years, and then um, I was never very happy about my practice management software, but it never bothered me to the point where I'm going to go and create one. Uh, and we start, I started a fee-for-service practice in the midst of the financial crisis, um, which was a bit crazy at the time, but we were following protocol and we were growing like crazy. So we had profitability by the third month. We hit a million on our first year. Things were going great. It started growing, started hiring associates. Then I got pregnant with twins and had to be on bed rest for my full pregnancy. Like on my 12-week exam, I was told, you're not going home. Uh, how, do you, how do you deal with that in a practice? Um, I wasn't ready. My practice was not ready. And we started losing about $100,000 a month. At that point, we had two practices and it was driving me crazy. I realized I had a lot of systems. The systems were just in my head. My associates were not diagnosing treatment planning at the same level. So I started creating systems for us to follow in the practice to get us out of where we were at, losing a lot of money. Um, and other people got interested in that. And I'm sure it's similar to your beginning story. Um, and they're like, okay, let's make it into a clinical software. And from there, let's make it to full practice management software. So that's where I'm at today. <laughs> and, and talk about real quick, the relationship between, um, you know, John Coy's, I know a lot of users are from Coy, the Coy Center. So talk about that relationship there for a moment. Yes, yeah, so, so I had uh, done all the courses at the Coy Center, um, and I loved it. I loved John's systematic approach. Um, everything has systems. Everything is a checklist. It's really easy to follow, and this is what I was doing in my practice. And I attribute a lot of the growth that we had in the early days uh, to these systems. When I started creating the software, uh, I told John that I'm using a lot of your material, so um, would you be interested in seeing this? And John gets approached by people every day <laughs> trying to sell him something. So he's like, he was being polite. He's like, ah, oh, yeah, I'll take a look. And then when he saw this, he's like, I love it. I want to partner with you on this. Um, and that's huge because he's been very generous of giving us all the material from the Koi Center uh, to embed in the software on the evidence-based material. And this is how we stay up to date. So every year I go to this annual symposium in July, uh, and then John provides me with a lot of the material to keep the software up to date. Well, that's great. That's great. And, and to be clear, you're not clinical at all anymore. You are fully out of clinical dentistry. I am fully out of clinical dentistry. And, and how long has that been? A few years now. <laughs> okay. And do you still own the practices or do you have no ownership in the practice? I sold my practices. You sold, okay. So just like myself, you're sold and you're, you're non-clinical. Um, I'm curious because and we, this wasn't planned. How do you feel about that decision? Because um, I'm in that boat starting next month, basically. I'm not clinical anymore. So uh, we're both practice owners. We both ran successful practices. I was not on bed rest, obviously, because I didn't have kids. But I had other situations where I decided I wanted to go in a different direction. How has that been for you, would you say, from from a 
Because I know there's a lot of people that think about that, and a lot of people are, I want to say, are envious of me when I tell them what, what position I'm in. But I think everybody's goal would be to get out of dentistry before they're 75 or 80 years old. At first, it was very weird for me not to go to practice, and I missed it a lot. I had gone through the AACD accreditation. Like, I was very involved clinically. It wasn't like, oh, I'll go do a couple of fillings here and there. I was a very, very involved clinician. Um, so at the beginning, it was very weird, but then I started getting a lot more excited uh, about the software development side of things. Uh, and that started taking more and more of my time where there's no more time in the day to go to the practice. And for you to be a great clinician, I find it takes a lot of dedication and a lot of learning. Uh, it's very hard to do it as a side hustle. And the 100%. software is the same thing. So, <laughs> so none could be a side hustle. Yeah, yeah. Bert, I started, or I social review started as a side hustle for me. I still remember telling my wife I was going to start a review platform. She goes, you go, go for it. Have fun. Little did I know, you know, eight years later, my life would be completely different where I'm, I'm not doing clinical dentistry anymore. But it, like I said, it, it's a good thing it happened. And, and obviously, we're in, a, we're in a better place now. So um, congratulations on your success. And, and I look forward here to learn more about, about the platform. So I think the first question I have is, is obviously, and I think it's more so for everyone that's out there, is why, why cloud? Okay, if you're, if you're a practice owner now, why do you want to switch to the cloud itself? What are the advantages, disadvantages? You know, why, why cloud dentistry? Why should you be doing something in the cloud? I think every industry is on the cloud. We're just like 10 years behind everyone else. So, but I know that's not a good enough reason. Um, in terms of security, you're way more secure having your data on the cloud uh, with dedicated people taking care of that versus having your own servers. You're not sure if things are being backed up properly. Some people use amazing IT people that take care of all of that, but other offices wait until they have the server crash and then they realize, oh, things were not backed up properly and now we cannot recover them. Uh, so I feel that part is very important, the security, the backup, but also the easy access to your data. Uh, you're out of the office, there's a snow day, you need to access uh, any of your data. Of course, if you have the right permission, you're able to access that from anywhere. Uh, so, so that's a big plus. And the cost saving, not having to run your own IT infrastructure would save you a lot of cost on the long run. In the long run, yeah, especially. Yeah, that, that I'm familiar with. Um, and then the other question specifically about, you know, your product is there's many cloud platforms out there. You know, there's, there's I can't even count how many there are. There's a lot, and you would probably know that better than I do. But talk to me about what makes Oryx a different platform, what makes them a better platform, what makes it a, what, what should make it a, a, a choice um, because I, you know, when I first heard of Oryx and I've heard it many, many years ago, when you first started from a couple of dentists who said they were, Co they were Coist followers and that's why they bought the software, but you do not have to necessarily be someone who is affiliated with Coist to buy the product. So why should a jet, why should a, a dentist look at, at buying, buying, um, Oryx over some of the other cloud platforms that are out there? The way I see cloud software or software in general is to make your life easier. And this is what we were trying to do. Um, every software should be able to bill the patient, to send them a request for a review, to send them a request for um, a reminder of their appointment. These are the basics of the software. What we try to do is to make that clinical experience very special um, and to make it very systematic where anyone who's doing the exam in the practice is getting to the exact same diagnosis and the exact same treatment plan. And originally, the thought was we would only have a clinical software. So we collect the data very efficiently. So we have an app that takes the patient's photos, upload them uh, to the cloud, and we do an exam in about seven minutes. Um, the minute the, finish, uh, the exam is done, the patient gets a full customized report with their own photos, with their own radiographs, the details, uh, everything in four different categories. So... Uh, it goes, this is how your gums are looking and we're concerned or your gums and bone are exactly where we want them to be at your age. So that's going great for you. We have these issues with your teeth structure. 
uh, bite and jaw joint and uh, your smile. And that gets the patient more excited. That gets the patient to accept more treatment. Uh, so that part is very, very unique to Oryx. And we thought we would just do that because we're getting the patients to be happier, um, to write better reviews, to re refer other people to the practice. Uh, then we realized that people are having a great experience clinically, but the other pieces are not fitting together well. And this is why we decided the whole cycle needs to be managed by Oryx. So we want them to finish. We want to make it super easy to book their next appointment. We want the front to have a checklist to make sure that everything that was supposed to be done pre-appointment, post-appointment is done. We want to make it easy for patients to pay for that, to reflect on their statements. And that's why uh, I feel that our software is very unique because it's, it revolves around the patient and not around um, billing insurance. And let's just get things done and <laughs> finish our day. Yeah, most most products are, are literally on the billing side, entering the data information. There's very few uh, platforms or products out there that focus on the patient, the patient, the patient experience. I, I mean, I think that you you had mentioned it that you take you take some photos, a seven minute exam, and then it sends out a personalized email or presentation to the patient about their about their dental health. And I think that's really really important because you're putting the patient first in the situation where um, a lot of the other platforms don't do that. Yeah, I would say our biggest success story was a DSO, seven locations um, that had a lot of young dentists, some experienced dentists, and they were just like many of our offices all over the place. Everyone is doing their own exam, everyone coming from a different school with a different perspective on how an exam should be done or what they look for. Some were very young, very scared to uh, present a large treatment plan to patient and uh, we went through the exam, we standardized the care for every uh, clinician that they have, and they followed um, the systems really well. So they went from uh, collecting $750,000 a month across the seven locations uh, to $1.65 million. So they more than doubled just being on Oryx. And they attribute that to a higher case acceptance um, more case presentation and more referrals. Um, so if you follow the system, it has a very big impact. And I don't think any other software can say that they have these advantages. That's really good. So, so talk to me about, so they, they take the photos and then does someone have to fill in the rest of the information as something that's automated through the system? I mean, are, is that what you're calling the, the personalized risk assessment or you're sending them something else as well with that information? So the personalized risk assessment is coming from the doctor's examination, but the exam is uh, kind of driving you where the assistant is calling out conditions. And uh, let's say you say decay um, on the mesial. Is it limited to enamel, into dentin, or deep into dentin? And now it's if it's deep into dentin, the software is automatically assessing a higher risk and telling the patient, this tooth might need the root canal in the future. So we're already letting the patient know all of this, and the clinician is feeling more confident if they forget to tell the patient that information. And now this is a red dot on their risk assessment that generates automatically. So now the doctor is, uh, the patient is going to look at that and say, this has to be done immediately. But some of the large restorations that I have, I know they might crack in the future. I could wait maybe six months or a year to do those. But at least it's not like every time I'm going to the dentist, it seems like they're coming up with something new. We told you everything you have. Now let's decide how to prioritize it. Gotcha. That's that's really, really interesting. So um, talk about some of the other features. I know one of the things you mentioned, you know, um, I know J John is very big into evidence-based dentistry. So talk about how you implemented that and incorporate that into the, the software itself. So a big part of it is how the exam is done. You're done with the exam. You have the risk assessment that automatically generates. And now we're working with more and more insurance companies to look at the diagnosis and to say, um, this patient that is diabetic and uh, is perio, uh, maybe stage one, we're going to allow two extra cleanings a year to prevent more disease. 
So we're taking this diagnosis to work with insurance companies to get more compensation for the dentist. Uh, the other part is a lot of the educational material uh, is embedded in the software. So if, let's say, the software comes up with the diagnosis of perio stage 2 for a patient and you don't really agree, you can click on the information icon. It gives you where this came from. Like, this is the last classification. These are the articles that we drew these conclusions from. Um, same thing, the patient answers positive to a disease you don't see on a regular basis you automatically have how this could affect their oral health and what this disease means. Uh, so a lot of information is already embedded and a lot of treatment protocols. So uh, you're doing an internal bleaching. It's not something that you do on a regular basis. So it's going to tell you how to open the access, what material to use, um, how often to change it, all of that you're free to use it or not. And this makes it really easy when you're training a new assistant. They used to come and ask me, what should I prep for the next patient? <laughs> like, you have the protocol uh, and it's all customizable. So let's say you like John's protocol, but you don't like step five and seven. You change them to your own. Or you could create your own protocols if you do things completely different. Interesting. So it's almost like, you know, you've taken... Uh, the standard operating procedures that are in the office and you've kind of morphed them or in embedded them into your into your software itself? Yes, for everyone in the practice. I worked out of three operatories in the office and you know each operatory was set up exactly the same. So when somebody moved from operatory to operatory, they knew exactly where everything was. Well, when I sold the practice, which was a year ago in October, the new owner changed everything and changed the entire flow. She was shorter than I am, so she didn't want to reach as far to grab things. So when I go to the office now, it's like that, that whole operating procedure I've had in my brain for 15 years <laughs> is totally messed up. So similarly, in this case, you have everything in, under, one, in, in, under one roof is what it is, really basically what's going on here. Yeah, it, it makes it really easy onboarding new employees. It makes it much easier with accountability. Like, for instance, when I'm checking out a patient, I would go sometimes to the front and it would be like, uh, when, Mrs. when is Mrs. Jones coming next? Oh, we forgot to book the next appointment. We forgot to collect the money. <laughs> we forgot to do this. And now it's like there is a checklist. This is what we need at the end of the appointment. If everything is checked, the appointment turns dark gray. If I look at my scheduler, it's all dark gray. I know everything was done. Blood pressure goes down. It's a good day. So it helps helps manage the office easier as well, not on top of helping deal with the patients, it helps managing the patient experience even better. Yeah. Wow, that's really cool. I, I think the other thing it does, and I know this is one of the things you want to talk about, was it really standardizes the care. It puts everybody on the same page. It allows the office to function better. So not only do you have a cloud-based platform, but you have everybody on the same page now in the office. Yes. You know, John speaks a lot about Sway, how we're always Sway to make a different decision than what evidence supports because we either like a patient or maybe dislike a patient. Uh, and he talks like if you see uh, a crack uh, on a second molar, like small crack on the filling, and the patient has a big tongue and salivates a lot and very heavy cheeks, you're just going to bring the tuberosity back and just say, it will be fine. But if it was on someone with an easy access, you would say, okay, that filling has a tiny crack. We need to replace it. Uh, so we're always swayed. And the way the program is designed is to remove that sway, uh, to look more objectively at things. If I see a restoration and it's more than half of the intercuspal distance, uh, there's enough literature to support to do an onlay or a cram. Even if I like a pa the patient, even if I don't want them to pay a lot, even if I feel a filling would do, I'm supposed to give them that option and have them understand that if a filling cracks, it might end up being more costly on the, wrong, on the long run. Uh, so the software gears people in that direction to do the, the same exact exam. Like same thing with perio. Sometimes hygienists would think they're doing the patient a favor by, I'll just do a cleaning. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and now it's the software is calculating the numbers and saying this patient is a perio patient and they're going to go on maintenance. Interesting. Gotcha. So 
I'm curious, you know, it sounds like it's a much better patient experience as well. It's easier on the practice. It gets everybody on the same page, but it really sounds like a really cool patient experience to be part of an office that uses Oryx. So, you know, talk about what you've heard from patients. I'm sure you've you've spoken to patients who've used the platform. Um, so talk about what they've said. Talk about, I mean, it's probably a very different experience for them. So, you know, I, I, we talked about, you mentioned reviews, you, you mentioned you're creating these raving patients, patients who are very happy that want to talk about um, the office. So talk about that experience from a patient perspective. It all starts with the patient completing their forms. The forms are very comprehensive, but very engaging. They're all picture-based. So instead of asking the patients, do you have bleeding gums, they see a photo of gums that are healthy gums that have some bleeding and they pick it. So it's because we have that gamification side where patients are going and picking from pictures. They get excited about that process. When they finish, we give them a score and that score get them even more excited to go, why did I get 75% on my gums or on my smile? I want to figure out why. So that gamification gets them to the office. When we surveyed patients after completing the forms, they said they thought the office is more technologically advanced and they trusted the dentist more. And that's before they even set foot in the practice. Um, Then going through the exam where the assistant is calling out loud the conditions, uh, a lot of dentists say every time I finish an exam, the patient would say, I've never been examined like this before. And patients used to say this to me and I would be like, you were, you just didn't know it. Just because we don't tell you that we're looking for cancer, we're looking for this, we're looking for that. Patients assume, oh, the doctor looked for two seconds and came up with this huge treatment plan. Now they have more value for the exam. And just leaving the office uh, with that risk assessment, uh, a lot of our offices say that they print it out and they found it became the biggest uh, marketing material for them. It's very visually engaging so patients would go and show it to their coworkers, to their family members, look what my doctor gave me. And we found that the ones with very with green everywhere, with the good scores, are the ones posting this on Instagram. So it's like a great report card. Um, I got it back from my dentist. This is what I have. So, so it's a totally different patient experience, and it's all focused on the patient. Um, we don't speak about any treatment plan in that risk assessment. So we're just looking at your conditions, at your diagnosis, and we leave the treatment plan up to the dentist. Wow, that's really cool. It sounds really great. I almost wish I was back in my own club. You know, look, if I was doing a practice over again, which I'm not, because I, I live in Florida and I'm not, I don't have a Florida license, so that's done. Um, but I'm sure that if I was getting back in the dentistry to some extent, that it works would be definitely one of the platforms I would look at because it sounds really interesting. It's a very different take on on the patient experience. Um, I'm curious, and I thought about this, and we didn't talk about this beforehand. Where did the name Oryx come from? So it was available. <laughs> we looked at so many names and everything was not available. It was one of the names that that was available. And that's why you chose it, just because it was available. So there's no there's no meaning to it necessarily. Yeah, no meaning. <laughs> gotcha. I was I was just curious. Um, so so someone's listening to this this um, this podcast or or viewing it, however they're learning about this, watching a reel or something. Um, they're intrigued. They're intrigued about what they heard because it's a very different take on the on the entire experience from the the, the back end to even the very much the patient, like we talked about. Um, what is the talked about the conversion. Talk to me about hey, I have Dentrix. You know, I'm thinking about going to Dentrix Ascend or one of these other cloud based platforms. Talk about the conversion process from from one of these platforms to to your platform. When someone decides uh, goes through the demo, like they go on our website, they book a demo, they see everything Oryx can offer and decide to go on Oryx. So if it's a startup, it's super easy. We just decide on a day. Uh, and they go through the training and they, they're they up and running. If they have a different software, um, then they get uh, an onboarding specialist that would put them in touch with, uh, with the trainer to make sure the office is fully trained and the software is customized to their liking before they go live. And at the same time, we're doing the test conversion. So we get access to their database. We do a test conversion. They make sure that they understand that this note was in this place in Dentrix. It's here in Oryx. 
um, they see that everything migrated uh, properly and we decide on a final migration date that typically takes one day. So some, a lot of offices do that on a Friday or on a Monday and they're like, we're off for that day. We recommend to have a light schedule the next day just because you, you want to get used to the software. Um, and offices really find that they take one to two weeks to fully get uh, trained to, or like if you ask someone in the first two weeks, do you like Oryx? They're like, ah, oh. <laughs> I'm not sure. Change is hard. Uh, when we ask uh, users after a month, everyone, like if we take away Oryx, they would say, no, I would never give it away. So it takes two weeks to a month for someone to be fully happy with the platform uh, and to get adjusted to a new platform. Gotcha. That was my next question. You answered that already. So for those that do listen, we're going to switch to the, the lightning round Q&A. Um, we're going to use a, a deck called The Hustle. I'm trying to find it here. Um, and it's all based on entrepreneurship and everything else. So, um, Rania, the first question is, what important rules have you learned about business that make you more successful? You need to hustle a lot and watch your bottom line, whether it's it's a practice, whether it's a software company. What is the number one thing people are always asking your help with or your help for? New clinical features. Okay. Um, what is one skill or trait you feel is imperative to be successful? Perseverance. Okay. If you lost everything you worked for tomorrow, what's the first step for you in starting over? Come up with a new idea. <laughs> All right. Have you ever turned down a client? Yes. How do you know when you have the right idea? You see traction. That's good. What has been your most satisfying moment in business? Happy users. Hey, that's, all, that's the most important thing. What is your favorite aspect of being an entrepreneur? I, you know, it's a roller coaster, so I don't know. It is a roller coaster, you're right. So um, what about the future are you most excited about? I think dentistry is evolving to a point where 10 years from now, it's going to be so different. I, that's that I'm really excited about. More automations, more AI. What business-related book has inspired you the most or what is your favorite book? Checklist Manifesto. Okay. And the last question here, what methods do you use to keep focused? Work a lot of hours. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Um, so... Uh, let's find out as we're, we come to the end of the podcast, find out how people can find out more about Oryx. They can see a demo. They can find out, you know, all the information they have, if they have now have interest in learning more about your product. Yeah. So if, uh, they just go on oryxdentalsoftware.com and click on book a demo, um, all the information is there, or they could email hello at oryxdentalsoftware.com. Okay. And should they mention about um, hearing about Oryx on the Raving Patients podcast or something? Absolutely. We love to know. Just like in a practice, you want to know who referred your patients. Same thing for us. We want to know who's referring our users, where they're hearing about us. Great. Um, and uh, one last question that just I just thought of as we're looking to end things. What, what do you think is holding back, um, one, people from moving to the cloud in particular, and then in your in your case, what do you think is the biggest barrier for people to, to switch to Oryx? They're used to their own practice management software. There is no urgency to change. And I think there's so much going on in a practice that who wants to, to introduce yet another change? Uh, typically, when they hear, m most of our users come referred from other users. So they hear about it and it's like, it made that huge impact. It corrected this. It stand for DSOs. It's like all our uh, clinicians work the same way. So that's a great incentive for them to move. Uh, for single locations, my uh, five star reviews are increasing. I'm getting more referrals. I'm getting more production. Um, and this gets people excited. But until they hear about all of this, um, typically, no one wakes up and says, let me change my practice management software. So what you have works, you're comfortable with. So there's no urgency. And by the way, for those that are interested in, we did 
discussed this, but it never came up, but I'll mention it now. For those that are interested, uh, BirdEye and Oryx are working on an integration um, to be able to fully integrate with the software to make it very easy to use. So that will, hopefully by the time this podcast comes out, that is already in, <laughs> completed. Um, but Ronnie, this was great. You, you were an awesome guest. Thank you for sharing your expertise. Thank you for sharing your story. Obviously, I'm, I, I'm very fond of that story because it's, it's very similar to mine. Um, so thank you so much for joining me today. Um, if you enjoyed the episode, please let your colleagues know. Please tell them to listen to this. If you're already an Oryx user, obviously, as Ronnie just said, I was going to ask her, but she mentioned it, that most of the, the her her new customers come from referrals from existing dentists. So if you are an Oryx um, uh, listener, uh, please share the podcast with your friends to let them know more about what Oryx can do for you. Uh, make sure you mention the Raving Patients podcast when you reach out to the team so they know you heard, they, that you heard about uh, the product through our, our means. Um, if you like the episode, please share it. Please review us. The, the works. Thank you to the sponsors, Dental Intelligence, Cloud Dentistry, and the Docsites for supporting us. And um, as always, remember, your reputation matters. Until the next episode, thanks for joining me, Rania, and we'll talk to everyone soon.